Hi everyone, Mr. Paul here. I am so excited to get to hang out with all of you guys today. We are going to make art together, like always. And I have a very special surprise for you. I invited my friend, Therese Garcia, who is an amazing artist, to come and make art with us. So, hi, Therese! Hi, Paul. <laughs> Hi, everybody! Yay! Good to be here! <laughs> it is always fun making art, but it is even more fun making art with friends. So thank you for joining me. Teresa and I have worked together before on projects with kids and it's always a blast. Absolutely. Therese does a very special kind of art called abstract art. And I wanted to ask you if you could teach us a little about what that word means. What Tell us about your art. Yes, so my art is abstract or also can be called non-representational because what that means is it means that the art itself doesn't have to represent something like a tree or an ocean or an apple or a house. It can represent something different, something abstract. Mm -hmm. So for instance, um, the big uh, exciting breakthrough in the art world in the United States happened in the 1950s, started probably in the 40s. Um, during World War II that's called the abstract movement and that's the history in this country probably pr probably earlier but pretty much the big wow happened yes. in the 50s. People like Jackson Paula and de Kooning Jackson Pollock's wife Lee Krasner huge names um, to, in the art world. So what they did was they, the breakthrough with them was to make art that came from the inside. For instance, like when they would paint, they didn't really look at a tree or an apple or a bouquet of flowers, but they would actually look, at, look down and take their paint and just create. Mm -hmm. Create. For instance, um, Mark Rothko used to like to make these big blocks of color on his canvases. Yeah. So he decided what he wanted to do as an abstract artist was to um, color them. Just mm -hmm. basically take these grids, these huge block grids, and just create colors within those. That's awesome. So abstract art has to do with it being not... It, it is real, but it's not representational. So let's look at some of your art, so and you can tell us a little bit about some of these pieces. Would that be okay? That'd be fine, yeah, All that'd right. be great. So what about this one here? What's the title of this first one we're looking at? So the first one we're looking at is called Feeling In With, and I call it a construct. As I was saying, it's abstract because you really can't define what it is, but it is something. An artist made it, I made it. Mm -hmm. So Feeling In With is, has, um, I call it a construct because it has a lot of different materials in it. It has recycled plastic, it has wire, it has thread, it has oil paint. And so this piece is 24 inches by 48 inches. That's pretty it's, big. It's pretty big, it's on wood, and it's mixed media, and it's abstract because of the fact that you can't really tell right away what it is. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times with abstract art, you have to really be patient because you're wondering what in the world is that, but if you start to realize that there's a movement movement called abstract work and it doesn't have to represent anything, then you can maybe be more patient and just look and just appreciate it for yeah. whatever it is that you like about it. Yeah. So that's the first one called Filling In With and it's um, tw uh, 24 inches by 48 inches on wood and it's mixed media with oil. Okay. And what about this next one here? Ooh, that's cool. The next one is called Aaron Five. That's one of my favorite pieces because that piece extends more um, out. It's a little bit sculptural. Oh, nice. Um, so what I mean by that is means that I'm not, it's not very flat. It's mm -hmm. on a flat surface, but the um, multi mixed media I'm using has a lot of different um, objects that are sticking out outward. Okay. So if you see that those two in person, you'll see that the materials that are embedded in the piece stick outward. And so Aaron Five really sticks outward. That's got a combination of fabric, thread, plastic, different types of plastic, and oil paint, probably screws. There's probably more that I'm forgetting. You just grabbed everything you could find and stuck it on there, didn't I you? I did. I did. <laughs> that sounds oh, really fun. The one thing I forgot to mention about abstract art, thanks for reminding me, is a very mindful experience, which means that you're kind of really paying attention to not the outer world, but your inner world, and then mm. you're choosing from there. So yeah, Aaron Five, there's a lot of fun 
objects in it and it's 24 inches by 24 inches and it's on wood so you can make art out of anything can't you you can make art there's a lot and there's um art that was like a uh, actually a lot of artists today do use art um they're using materials mm -hmm. um, beads they're using plastic they're using thread they're using things that perhaps you would call trash yeah and they're putting it in their pieces which i think is really mm -hmm. cool because we can't always afford to go to the art store and buy expensive art supplies no. but we we all have some junk laying around our house that we could use to make art with, I bet. Absolutely. And there are some pretty famous artists that did use that in the 70s and 80s in this country. People like um, Eva Hesse. Mm -hmm. A lot of artists would use um, found objects such as old fiberglass or old plastic. There's even been artists that have used old cars to make art. Oh my art. gosh, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah, right, they let's, paint it. <laughs> let's look at more of your stuff. Okay. Um, the other one that we're, gonna, we're looking at is called Before He and She. Okay. And I chose that one because it's different. It's flat and it's oil on paper. There's no found objects. It's just the oil paint on paper and this Ooh. one um, this one I chose to show because this one has a lot of marks or scarifications or just taking an old um, pen that doesn't work anymore and making marks so this oh, one right into the wet paint right into the wet paint and so this one is on paper and it's um, 24 by 18 and it's oil on paper as I said my work will have different colors in it but the process is to just take a color grab it and use it and then let that inform me about the next color or the next process or step I want to take. Now that sounds like a fun process to me. <laughs> I think we need to try that it's, today. It, it's fun but it can be scary. <laughs> True, I bet. Because there's no map. You there's, don't know where you're headed. There's huh? no map. No, oh. you're, it's just basically... So it's kind of like we're going on an art adventure. It's a discovery for <laughs> <Yeah>. sure. <laughs> well, let's look at one more piece first because I love looking at your art and then we'll Thank get you. started making some art together. So the next piece uh, that we'll look at is called Z and A. And Z and A, actually, you were in the studio. I made oh. Z and A at Open Ground Studios. Actually, nice. all these were made at Open Ground Studios. The color is mainly yellow okra mm -hmm. with some white pinks in it. And the reason why it's different is because most of this painting is comprised of this yellow okra with a little bit of almost like chips of um, whites or off-whites in there. And I just sometimes with my work, it surprises me because I don't know if it's done or not, but when I saw this, it was so unusual mm -hmm. that I thought, I'm just going to keep it the way it is. So a lot of my art does depend on my own awareness of what I think is done and isn't done mm -hmm. because there's no map. Right. It's Except done when it feels right. It's done when it feels, it's done when I feel like it's at home. <laughs> so today, Therese is going to help us make some abstract art of our own, right? So we have all kinds of materials here, but just like always, you guys can use anything that you have at your house. So don't worry if you don't have the same stuff that we have. You use whatever you have, even if it's just pencil and paper, right? That's completely Absolutely. fun. Mm -hmm. But we've got construction paper, glue, scissors, markers and colored pencils and poster board. We've got all kinds of stuff here. So if you want to go grab some art supplies so you can get ready to work with us, Therese is going to tell us what we're doing. <laughs> what okay, are we doing? Okay, so today folks, today everybody, what we're going to do is called um, abstract collage. Oh, and fun. basically the reason why it's abstract is the same thing I introduced was that abstract art isn't representational. It's just a lot of fun a lot of fun. So I like fun because it's abstract. So the first thing um, I'll tell you about what we're going to do is we're going to um, have construction paper, and then um, I'll just talk about it first. With the construction paper, we're going to um, cut out four different shapes as many times as you want. One of them will be a rectangle. One of them will be a triangle. One of them will be a circle, and one of them will be a square. So okay. rectangle, circle, triangle, and square. Got Those, it. Those are the four um, um, shapes that we're going to cut out. Okay. And then once we cut them out using paper like this, and as Paul said, you can use anything you want. It doesn't have to be colored. It can just be white, or it can be mm -hmm. newspaper. Yeah. It could be. It could actually be paper towels. So basically, um, today for this, we have really nice colored paper. So we're going to just cut out those shapes, and then um, once we cut out those shapes, we'll start with those four shapes because we'll build on that. Mm -hmm. Then what we'll do after we cut out the four shapes is we'll glue those four shapes onto the poster board. 
And like Paul said, if you have another type of paper you want to glue it on, that's fine too. So today yep. we have poster board, so I'll refer to it as the poster board. So we will basically cut those four shapes out that I mentioned, and then we'll glue them. Now this is the fun part, you guys. Yay! And gals, <laughs> yeah. we, we, um, get to, we get to glue them anywhere on the poster paper. Awesome. Anywhere. There's, there's no rules. There's no rules because abstract like art has to do with you choosing what you want to do. A lot of times when you choose what you want to do, then you'll start to focus on that mindfulness I was talking about. You'll see, oh, I, glue a, I glued a, a triangle over here and a circle here, and then I glued these other ones over here, and you'll start to go, aha, that kind of looks like a square, that doesn't look like anything. And then from there, you'll be able to gauge what you want to do next. So we'll do that, we'll glue okay. them on, and then what I'd like us to do is maybe just do enough, we'll repeat the process enough times so that you feel that your poster paper or whatever it is you're gluing on is good enough. Like say mm -hmm. for instance, if you want to stop with just those four shapes, you can stop. But if you're like me and want to keep repeating it and gluing more of those different shapes on, you can do that too. And here's right. the thing, if you like if you um, cut out those shapes and you want to repeat the process and glue more, you can you can just do circles. You don't have to do all four. Mm -hmm. You can do all four. You can do all circles. You can do all squares. You can do all rectangles. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Let's Could do you that. hand me a couple colors? It doesn't matter sure. what colors. Whatever you. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. And let's see. We need scissors. Scissors. Right? Yeah. We need. Let me get some paper for me. And then we need some scissors. So each each person's gonna have some scissors. I don't know if you want the blue or the red or the green. Oh, I'll take these. I think these cut in a like a zigzag. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah. So fancy, I want the fancy zig scissors. I want the zigzags. <laughs> <laughs> Therese wants the zigzags too. All right. So what are the shapes now? Square. Shapes: square, circle, circle, triangle, and rectangle. So do you draw the shapes first, or just cut them out? You cut them out. You. Just Go for you, it. you can draw them, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut out. So the first shape I'm going to cut out is a square. Okay. okay. And does it? Ooh. Nothing has to be perfect. Well, that's good. Because <laughs> <laughs> life isn't perfect; it's just all sorts of things. So. Well, this... look at that! I got a square and a rectangle. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> oh, good point. So there's a square, and then the next one. <laughs> Will be a circle. Okay. Oh, that's gonna be. And tricky. I like what you're doing, Paul. You're you're going big. I, I love like it. to work big. So I love <laughs> it making. It's making me really happy. And just, I want you to know that the circle doesn't have to be. Again, this is pretty much a circle. That's so a don't, pretty good don't circle. Don't worry if it's not a perfect circle. You can just make it so that we can say that's circular. Yeah. That's circular. circular. That's a good way to put it. You can just do circular. <laughs> Mine is emphasis on the blur. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're going to wait till so Paul's cool. done. And then Kay. this next one we're going to do is we're going to, we'll do triangle at the end because next one is a uh, rectangle. Well, I already had mine. All right. So now <laughs> it won't be that way. <laughs> All right. So the next thing we'll do is a triangle. Ooh, and okay. you're inspiring me, Paul, to go do awesome. this large. So I'm going to do a large triangle. Go big or go home. And if you remember, a triangle <laughs> has three sides, and a square yeah. has four sides, and a rectangle has four sides, and a circle doesn't have any sides. Whoa! No <laughs> sides at all? No sides. <laughs> all right, okay. let's compare triangles. Oh, look, they're both so cute. Yeah, they're pretty awesome. Mine okay. looks like a Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah, yours does. It really does. I like your colors. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so I'm we've got our four two. shapes. So at this point, um, everybody, we can. here's what we can do. We can kind of take a pause and decide we can glue these on now or we can wait and keep cutting more out okay. so I think what we should do is start and glue okay. something right now so All right. at, this, glue. at this point any uh, anyone that's watching you can glue whatever shape you want at this point so you don't have to start with one or the other so I'm going to start with the triangle okay. I'm going to start with the circle and um, just basically have the glue and we're going to put the glue on so basically you've got the glue and I would suggest to glue the sides and then maybe a couple of in the middle. Okay. And Thank we're gonna do you. that. We have to share because we only have one glue. All right. So I glue and then you can flip it over and you can glue it anywhere. Don't worry if there's glue that kind of spread out. That's all part of it. 
A lot of abstract art is actually the process. So if there's any glue, that's part of the that's part of the art piece. There's no such thing as a mistake, mm -hmm. right? There's no there's no such thing as a mistake unless um, the artist says I don't like that, mm. and that means that it really wasn't a mistake. It's just something that you want to change. Okay. So you're right. There's no such thing as a mistake. It's just you want to change it. You can yeah. change it. Um, okay, so that's one, and then we'll start. Ooh, I like your glue drips. That's kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, so everybody, I've got glue drips, and I want to keep it that way because yeah. that would be part of my piece. <laughs> oh, I'm jealous. I want a glue drip. All right, drip. well, you can do a glue drip. <laughs> I'm like, you can actually glue. glue I might just start <laughs> drizzling glue all over this thing. No, you know what? That's part of abstract art. If you did that, so, yeah. oh, by the way, everybody, if you do want to just do glue, and that would be totally yeah, fine. Yeah, totally, totally fine. Totally fine. All right, so, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some extra glue on here. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that's that's the spirit to get excited about your piece. Um, yeah. We want we want you guys to be, get really excited about this because it's art and art is worth getting excited about. So we. Oh, I like that. how you overlapped. I'm yeah. gonna do that too. So, overlap. Like, tell them what overlap means. Okay, so in art, I do it a lot. It's kind of like something I naturally do. It's called an overlap, which means that I'll take a paint or a material like plastic, and I'll overlap it with another material. Or if it's paint, I'll take a red and I'll overlap a couple col colors over the okay. red. So nice. overlap is when you've got like two different things going on top of each other or multiple, okay. multiple things on top of each other. That looks beautiful. Oh, thank and you. Oh. I love, yours. I love yours. That's awesome. Your drizzle is so cool. Oh, thank you. So um, I'm going to do the next shape, which is um, the rectangle. Okay. Do you want to do the rectangle? Sure. Yeah. We'll do the rectangle. So we're just going to put glue. And there is a lot of a lot of times when you're putting the glue down, um, you want to be careful, but you also want to have fun. So um, definitely remember to have fun. Fun is important. And then, of course, when you glue something down, you just make sure you've got that all so that it's sticking. And like I said, don't worry if there's any glue on the outside. It doesn't really matter. That's going to be part of the... It's called the process in abstract art. That's going to be part of the piece is the process. Okay. Which means the I process like was some glue got. And the <laughs> last thing we're going to do is we're going to do some... Um, the square. Mine is, like, small, so I don't need a lot of glue. There mm -hmm. we go. <laughs> That sounded like a drum when you did right? that. It's <laughs> oh, a music it did, lesson yeah. too. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> mm hmm I love your colors, Paul. I love your colors. They're really cool. Thank you. Very, very cool. Now where do I wanna put you? Mm-hmm. Right here. Oh, okay. that looks awesome. So at this point, to make it a little bit more interesting, I'm going to take one more sheet and, okay. and cut out one more color, and then um, we can we can start with the next thing. So I'm going to just do... I'm going to do a... So remember, we're just cutting out a, a triangle, a circle, a square, and a rectangle, and they can be any shape. I, I'm going to copy you, Paul. I love how you make the big, big shapes. <laughs> That's the best way to go. I'm gonna do another. You can do small shapes. Sm making small shapes too helps. Making big and small and medium help because it makes the piece interesting. Different sizes. Different huh? sizes, huh? <laughs> this looks like purple lasagna. Yeah. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> if your lasagna is purple, that might be a problem, though. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something happened there. <laughs> something bad. We happened. don't know what happened. <laughs> Crazy happen. <laughs> okay, so circle. I'm gonna make. Therese it. and I always have a lot of fun when we make art together, don't we? We do have a lot of fun. We um, are both members of the same art studio. That's how we met. That's right. And so that means a lot of times artists will have a studio, which is where they go to do their work. And we're both members of a studio called Open Ground Studios, where lots of artists mm -hmm. work together. So Teresa and I and other artists hang out and make art. I'm so happy to have that because it means that I get to know Paul and we get to make art together and there's nothing better in the whole wide world than making art together. Yes, and when you're working on a piece of art, it's really good to have another artist that you can show it to and say, what do you think of this? Absolutely, you know? yeah, that's the thing that's really great with the cooperative studios is that we were able to just say, hey, 
And that happens a lot when you're making it work. Even with this piece, you might go to your mom or your brother, but if they're not around, then mm -hmm. it could be, a, you know, that would be fine. But it's really helpful and kind of cool to just show it to somebody and yeah. get their feedback. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Look, you got so many more shapes. I yeah. need to get busy cutting. <laughs> oh yeah, my gosh, so I've been talking too much. It's awesome. So at this point, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and um, I guess so. made, um, I made another square, another rectangle, and then another circle and another triangle, so. Well, I had no idea all of that was happening over there. Yep. I was just yammering away. <laughs> That's a good thing, <laughs> Sometimes too. Sometimes Mr. Paul gets distracted a little bit, but it's all right. Well, that's the fun part about working with another artist is we get to talk. Yeah. <laughs> we get to be quiet and then make and then also collaborate and have some fun conversations. Yes. Some artists are very shy, but some artists like me like to talk. <laughs> and me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you always have very interesting things to say. Oh, yes. Well. <laughs> Sometimes people go, what is she talking about? So, unless you're an artist, you, know, yeah, you, you get those, might not know. you might not know. That's okay. All right, let me glue some more shapes down. So how are yours coming? Are you yeah. guys cutting out shapes? Are you guys making some progress with the shapes? And also, how are you liking the way it looks? Yes. That's, that's a fun part. Hopefully it's it's going great for you guys. I'm Do you sure ever like step away from your artwork to see how it looks from a distance? Oh my gosh, Paul. I do that all the time. Do you? I, yes. I kind of have to because sometimes uh, one thing that artists will do, as you might be doing this too, is you're just getting so involved that I do step back. And I'll say, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, what is, what's uh, going let on here? Me look at this. And so <laughs> I will step back to really, really see if I can feel it or see if it's looking the way I'm trying to make it. Yeah. I do. What about you? Do you yes, step back? Yes, I do too. I, th I think it's really important. It's good. I like if it. You're, if you're working really close on something after a while, you don't like really that. see it with fresh eyes anymore. So you have to, in fact, if you want, once you get all your shapes glued on, I'll hold yours up for you so oh, you yeah. can see it from a distance and if you w wouldn't mind you can hold mine. I love that. I actually I like yours a lot. You can I like yours a lot yours too. Yours is really cool. They're gonna make a nice pair. I think they they're are. gonna look really cool they like are. hanging together somewhere. Yeah yeah I, I'd love to show um yeah whenever you want to hold these up. Okay. And I'm just gonna put a little bit more glue at the end because there we go. I'm ready. <laughs> okay let's have the unveiling. Drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold it up so they can see too. Ta -da! Ta -da! So this is just, I'm using two um, construction sheets and that's where I am so far and I think I like it so I think I'm going to show you guys the next step but that's what I have awesome. so far. Like I said, you can keep, you can, you can if you want to, you can just do this. This yeah. could be the project but we're going to go show you one more There's thing more. after this. Okay, mm -hmm. you want to hold up mine for All me? Alright, do the drum roll for you. That's it's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. Oh, <laughs> Thank I you. I love it. I this love the way awesome. you glued those. Thank and here's you. the cool thing, everybody. You can actually, one thing about abstract art is that it can go any way you decide to, what? to put it. Oh Isn't my that gosh. crazy? That's it, so cool. Right? <laughs> so I just wanted to show you that. I like just art with FYI. no rules. I think that it makes yep. it really, I'm so, going to work on it upside down for a while now that I know that trick. <laughs> See, it's a good trick. So <laughs> yeah. um, I kind of suggested it. So I'm going to do, I'm going to look at my. Oh, well, that looks cool. Right? That way too, huh? And then the cool thing is um, after we get done, you'll see that it, um, you'll find maybe a, a certain way you, a direction that you really like. Oh, that feels like the right, right now, way. I don't know which direction I like, so I'm just going to start to do the next step this way. So. <laughs> All right, what's next, Therese? Next is, okay, so <laughs> next, um, like I said, this is a cool step that you can take if you want to follow along. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take either a marker or a colored pencil, and okay. again, you can choose whatever colors you want. There's a lot of colors in here. Oh, there sure are. So I pick purple, so I'm going to start with purple. So oh, you're probably wondering what next. Well, I'll tell you what next. I'm just taking a whole bunch of colors. That's okay. a good idea. Okay, I'll take. Yeah, I'm going to take. I'm going to take some well, somber, 
So I'm calling oh. these somber colors because they're gray and brown. Uh -huh. They're kind of like low key colors, but if this is an orange, orange has just got That's more pretty. high energy. So yeah. I'm taking these. Um, Beautiful. Taking these. I might get more. Now, are there any rules about what we do next? The only rule what we do next is just uh, take the cap <laughs> off. <laughs> I like okay. that rule. But I'll go. I'll go. I'll just briefly go over just generally what we're doing at okay. this point. Not really a rule, but just generally what we're doing is yeah. we're just basically going to take whatever color you want. I'm going to choose orange at first, okay. and then once you start using it, you're basically going to um, color it however you want. Like I like to make shapes. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make shapes okay. and I, I'm, I'm going to just show you right now because this is not necessary to say this. I'm going to take a shape like that. So we're basically going to be using our markers to create shapes oh, and, and nice. colors over the already existing paper okay. shapes. Can they and go so, right on top of yeah, the so I'll show you. Yeah, too? one more. So basically I'm going to do another one. Ooh, oh, that's this. a big one. That's but I'm not, I'm going to cool. use, I'm going to use that as a as outside, but then I might make color more on the inside. Oh, this is So fun. basically, okay. you're just going to make more designs, whatever designs you want with your markers, however you want. They don't even have to be a recognizable shape. So basically, that's what we're doing right now. And when we do this, you can um, do it in silence, or if your mom or somebody's in the background, you can just okay. talk with them. But a lot of times doing it in silence is kind of fun because you can focus. I'm not so good at silence. <laughs> you don't have to be silent. Let's just I get tried. That clear. I lasted about lasted five a seconds. Minute, huh, That's good for us, though. I try. Right? That's all you can do is try. Yeah, and so here's the thing, you guys. When I make art, I actually start, and then I start seeing other colors, and I get really excited, and so I'm going to add like a green. So definitely do that plunge in. Get all excited about your colors and just keep using them however you'd like. You know what I think is really cool um, that I just noticed is I'm, I've am i only used one color so far, but depending on what color it goes, it. it looks different depending what color it's on top of. Right. That's very true. That's a good observation. Say that again. I think that's worth it. <laughs> yeah. Look, I'll show you guys. Show, show, show See, people. I only use one color. I like color, that. That'd be a good teaching. Okay. But it looks different because it's on top of different colors. So that red on top of the purple looks darker. Darker. And it looks different on top of the orange than it does here. So you get like three colors in one. That's a good bargain. So that's a good point is that you're kind of like talking about something that my art does, Paul, is like... That's why I get these in my artwork. If you see them in person, you may have noticed. Mm -hmm. There's all these color. It's not just one color, even though it might be yellow okra. Yeah. You'll see other colors. It sounds strange, hard to say, but because of the layering. Yeah. So these projects are called constructs, and what we're doing is we're layering. And we're having fun with that. We <laughs> are. I'm having a blast. Okay. I like that I don't have to worry about making it look like something. It's just how whatever right. feels right. That's it. You got it. That's it. what you said is really what abstract or non-representational art is. It doesn't really need to, it doesn't look like anything, but it's definitely something. Yeah. That's it. That's what it is. Yeah. It's more like so, a feeling or, or something. Yes. And I, um, I liken it to like energy. Mm -hmm. I kind of, I think my work has a lot to do with the energy of it based on the color or the shapes or the forms. So that's yeah. it. That's it. You just in a nutshell. So Paul, do you like, um, what are you thinking about this project? Is it kind I of? I love <laughs> it. I'm just it, like, it's nice not to have to, you know, worry about the normal things that I think about while I'm making art. And mm -hmm. I'm, it's kind of just like whatever comes into my head, I'm just doing, I'm not worrying yeah. about it. You can make shapes, patterns. Mm -hmm. Oh, that looks so cool. Look at all those different. Now that's only a few different colors, but it looks like you used like 20 colors it, there. It's true. Yeah. It has that effect on it because of that kind of layering on layering. It's like, whoa. That's How'd really that cool. And then you realize, like you said, there's a lot of colors within that. Another thing I think is really cool is that we both had the same materials and we did the same process, but we have two so totally different, different right? pieces. I know. Yeah, because you know what, guys? Your artwork is really an expression of you. So what you make is going to be different than what everybody else makes in the world. And that is a pretty cool thing. That is really cool. You should never compare your art to other people's or try to, you know, 
think you don't want to think that your work isn't good because it doesn't look like somebody else's. Your work is good because it's different, because it's you. Right. That's what we want to see. That's what we love. That is very true. You, the, the, it's so exciting to have diverse yes. art. It's so exciting because you know why diverse art teaches everybody something different. Yeah. We wouldn't have the insight from what, if they all look the same, we wouldn't learn anything. I think diversity is a great teacher. So Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. When you show your art to people, you're showing them a little bit more about you and who you are and what you think and how you see the world. Mm-hmm. I love that. That's why I love seeing all of your art, too, when you share it with us. I feel like we get to know you uh, a little bit that way. I could just do this all day, Therese. I do too. <laughs> this might be a 20-hour video, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a book of a video. Yeah. It's going to be non-stop. <laughs> It is encouraging though because when it's that exciting, that means it's got to be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I love the overlap of all the different shapes. I think that makes it really fun. It does. The overlap is exciting. <laughs> it gives it like a special feeling. Yeah. You know, one of the piece. things that I'm thinking about while I'm working on mine... we all have energy. We all have different energy. Oh, yeah, we do. Um, but one of the things I'm thinking about is, the, is how visual art has a, a lot in common with music. How uh, when you listen yes. to a song, it has a rhythm, it has patterns. It that has makes all... you feel a certain yeah. way because of all that. And when I look at a piece like this, it has those same things. There's like a rhythm to the way my eye moves around. Yeah. It gives you a certain feeling. So that's kind of cool. And some music is abstract too, isn't it? Oh yeah, jazz is very abstract. There's a lot of, um, a lot of improvisation with, I think... Uh, Gosh, I'm forgetting his name. But anyway, jazz can be very improvisational. Yeah. Where the artists really know their they know their um, instrument by heart, but they're choosing to play music that is very improvisational. Yeah, just that's because cool. they know it so well. Yeah. All right. Are you about finished? Do you need to do yeah. a few more things? Yeah. So or? I'll do like one more thing. What I was going to say is that the cool thing about these pieces is that you don't have to finish them all in one fell swoop. Yeah. You can actually come back to it. So when I show you mine, it's not going to be finished, but it's going to be a great example of this exciting project in itself. So yes. yeah, so I can sh show you mine. Okay, let's see. Um, this is what I have. <laughs> Beautiful. I love that. It. Adding those shapes on top with the markers makes it totally different, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, it totally does. Now, which direction do you so, like the best? So, if I were to, if I were to say that this is finished right now, or uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I don't want to work on it right now, if this were it, I think what I do is I would. Uh, <laughs> I know it's tough choice, mm -hmm. huh? It looks good every direction. <laughs> I, think, I think I would show it like this. Okay. Oh, but anyway, I love that. yeah. So here we have like um, we got the collage of the um, paper and then the the ink of the markers and making more designs on top of that and like I said the cool thing about these art projects is that they're kind of non-stop I mean it's whenever you decide you can always say I'm finished but come back and go you know what I want to work on it more I encourage you guys to work on your pieces and, and she'll do that I'll come into the studio and she'll be working on a piece that she started weeks before and I feel like each time you come you see it a new way or you think of yeah, something new to add that's right? a lot about what abstract artwork is, is that we don't ever quite finish it until finally we get that aha uh -huh. I think it's done now and so abstract art we're a little different where because it's um, not really as defined as another type of art genre then that means it might take us that much longer to finish it because we're still still trying to get it more defined yeah if that makes any sense and that's okay it can take as long as you want it to take there's yeah. no rules all right yeah. let me show you guys I love now. yours that is beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. It's really, really cool. You want to I, have it? I like it that I way. I think I like it that way. I feel like it, if we, the movement's going upwards somehow, I yeah. like that. So now one of the things I always tell them to do when you do finish an art piece, and if yours isn't finished, you don't have to do it, but we always sign our artwork. Let's That's what makes it finished. sign the artwork. So I put Mr. Paul down here. <laughs> And I'll put Therese, because I like mine this way. That way, when people are looking at your artwork 500 years from now, hanging in an art museum, they're going to know 
Who made it? Right? Yes. Yeah, so gonna... <laughs> oh, and I don't know about you, but um, you can also sign it on the back if you yes, want to. Yes, you can definitely do that. And sometimes I'll put the year on the back too, so I'll remember when I made it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool to look back because we've both been oh. painting a long time so you can know when you made your yeah. art. Yeah, one thing I want to tell you guys and gals before we um, head off is that with these abstract pieces that we just made, if someone says, what's that all about? What does that mean? You ask them, well, if you look at it, it's whatever you want it to be. Yeah, so, turn it around on them. So abstract, what do you see? Abstract art is really, if you ask any abstract artist, what's that about? They'll usually tell you it's whatever you decide it to be because it's abstract. Yeah. And I know I made it, but that's what abstract art is, is the audience gets to decide. So if someone asks you, what is that? Since we all like to say with art, what is that? Yeah. You can tell it's abstract art and what do you think of it or what do you think it's about? And if they say, but what do you think it's about? Say, well... I'm, I'm, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or it's... Basically, you don't owe people an explanation, You don't need to do define, you? yeah, you don't need to define it. Yeah, mm -hmm, I love art. that. It makes it so everybody so gets to see it their own way. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. And I want to say a special thank you to my good friend Therese for sharing all about abstract art with us. Now, if everybody who's watching wants to go and see more of your work online, where could they go? Oh, they can go to Therese. It's T-E-R-E-S-E. -E garcia.com all one word um, and you can find my website there and my art and I also want to say thank you this has been an honor an Aww. honor to work with you and do an art project thank you so much so it's go, a pleasure go, being here go visit Teresa's site she has so much cool art that will inspire you to keep making more abstract art all week long or as long as you want that's right? right that's right <laughs> bye bye, bye. Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope that you learned something new and had fun while you were at it. If you did, well, guess what? We have a whole bunch more waiting for you over at artmakesus.com in our Watch and Learn video series. Be sure to check out what's happening in AMU Live, all of our upcoming classes and workshops that you can participate in online. We also have one-on-one -on -one mentorship opportunities. Remember, everyone is an artist.